Good morning, my friends. It is Tuesday, January 9th, and I'm here with you at the rising of the sun. I have a beautiful illustration from a gospel. In the Middle Ages, they were so taken with copying the word with artistry and calligraphy, and they would create these beautiful illustrations. This is the 11th century before the printing presses, before computers, when a book meant years of labor sometimes. Every page delicately and beautifully constructed. Here is John the Evangelist, the writer. As you can see, he's being inspired. He's surrounded by story and by angels illumining the story. He is within the book that he's writing. With one hand, he pens. With another, he reaches out to hold. Looks like a long, strange thing. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's parchment. And of course, he has the eagle, which is his... Um, inspiration, his animus. The sign of John's gospel is flying towards him and he's looking up at it. It's an incredible illustration of the beauty of the word, which comes to us so easily now, but back then it was cherished, the printed, not printed, the written word. find ourselves in the book of Isaiah just for the day today. We're sort of jumping around the Hebrew scriptures until we land in Genesis next week. Um, in this text, Isaiah is saying to the, the Hebrew people, to the people of Israel, don't worry, one day the lands of the south, Egypt and Nubia, they will bow down to you. They will be enslaved and in chains and they will walk by you and they will bow because you will be victorious. Here's this concept again that is woven through the Hebrew scriptures, this either or concept. There's a winner and a loser, a victor, someone who's defeated. Um, the winner gets a lot of wealth, the loser is enslaved, and God is on one side or the other. It's a very binary view of the universe. No wonder Jesus had to come. Jesus was the victor who gave himself but think about how radically different that concept was. Because up until that time, it was either God was with you and you won, or God was not with you and you did something wrong and God is angry. So Isaiah says, God is really with you even though things are going bad. Don't worry about it. Your enemies will come and they will walk by you in chains and they will bow to you. And that's supposed to be a good thing. Well, this we still really live according to this understanding this understanding that some of us have to do well and the others poorly, that wealth is made off of others' backs. that, And it does work, but it ultimately doesn't work. What Jesus came to show us is that by loving ourselves, others and pouring ourselves out to others, we can actually make a better world for all of us. But it takes an enormous amount of courage and strength. In fact, you must be willing to die in order to see that vision carried out. But it is the hope for our world, the hope of generosity, the call of love, the witness of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the richness of the word of God. We thank you for the way the medieval illustrators cherish this word. Give us that same awe and wonder that we might listen more carefully, that we might use our creativity to manifest your word into this world. A word of hope, of grace, 
Bless the sick today, Lord Christ. Bless all those who are homeless. We had a homeless man die on the streets of Jacksonville yesterday. I don't know his name. Bless those who don't have a home. Bless those who are incarcerated or addicted or struggling with mental illness. Show us how you have made us to do your work in this world. Whatever little piece of your work we are called to do, empower us to find that purpose. Give us wisdom. Give us a reverence for this earth that you've made, this beautiful earth that you've given us, and all that walks upon it or grows upon it or flies in the air. And bring us peace, Lord Christ. Guide us to find a way towards peace. This we pray in the name of Jesus, your son, who John was inspired to write about so long ago. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.